I do hear you, yes. I hear you. Everybody else there? Can yes, we, we can. We can hear both of you guys. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, take it off. Take it away, Dana. We're just going to do it this way, Mike. Mike Pereira, can you hear me? I do, Dana. I'm sorry. I I just mastered Zoom. I, I've obviously not figured out how to master this site here. But um, but You're, anyways, I'm sorry that um, I can't. We're trying to increase your skill set. Um, no, I know. Uh, it's terrible. I, I mean, I actually just initiated my own first Zoom call, which I have in a little while. But um, yeah, I, this is too complicated for an old man. <laughs> Well, Mike, we want to say thank you for joining us. Um, Mike Pereira and I go way, 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 way back, probably mid 2000s sometime, uh, where we first met at one of the NASO summits. He's been a, a friend of mine and a friend of the NMOAs for quite some time. We've had him out here as our keynote speaker. He was here when we hosted the summit in 2014, and he's really been instrumental in uh, allowing me to meet and forge relationships that I've been able to share with the New Mexico Officials Association. So not only do I admire Mike as a professional with everything that he's done in terms of officiating and battlefields to ball fields, but he's a, a very dear friend of mine who I, I just love to death and I'm so glad to have him here tonight and we'll be calling on him to have a couple of more of these with our officials. So um, I'll turn it over to Brad, but Mike, thank you personally, and thanks for everything that you do for officials and for our state. Oh, Dana, you're more than welcome. I appreciate the words. Um, as you can see on the screen, Mike has an extensive career in officiating, starting all the way back to 1971 with Pop Warner, which a lot of us have been yaffle ourselves. And... Uh, he is a trailblazer in his field of um, Schwartz Rules Analyst with Fox. And after he did his 2010 stint with Fox, all the other net networks jumped on board with Rules Analysis and all the other different sports uh, brought it in also. And it's become a staple in, in sports as we view them. And he is, for my personal aspect the ceo president and director of battlefields to ball fields which is a charity organization that he started and he gets funded by various means uh, for veterans coming out of that are active still active duty or uh, out of work or out of um, the military and getting them started in officiating providing a great great um opportunities and, and support so that being said mike it's up it's on you uh i i do if you wanted to talk about the bang bang play that you talked about today that would be pretty awesome um and also um your passion with battlefields to ball fields well yeah you know, i was on the phone earlier with brad today as one of our b2b calls and and um I asked for questions, and one of the questions that was asked of me was that that I recall having a bang bang play um, that I got wrong that um, that has stuck with me for a long time, and it was a rather interesting question because uh, the answer to that question is, oh my gosh, yes. And the the I worked one playoff game. I, I'm like I'm I'm. In, kind of an interesting run I guess I've made to my position now. I never played the game um, and got involved in officiating and, and got to the top of the profession, so to speak, without uh, without even playing the game. But I made it into the NFL in 1996, and my second year in 1997, I already knew before I started it was going to be my last. Um, and I knew that because they had offered me a position in the office as a supervisor of officials, and I had decided to take it, um, uh, you know, after my second season. And my last game was Kansas City and Denver in, in Kansas City in the uh, divisional championship round in the playoffs. And early on in the game, within the first three minutes of the game, you know, the pressure ratchets, you know how it is, pressure ratchets up in the uh, 
in bigger games. I mean, we all treat every game the same, but, you know, more more on the line, more people, pressure ratchets up, and Denver had the ball early in the game, and they ran a simple out and up, and in the NFL rules, you know, can't defender can't initiate contact or receiver beyond five yards um, if the quarterback's still in the pocket. Well, 10 yards on the out and up. The defender chucked the uh, – Chucked the receiver, completely knocked him off his route. The quarterback was still in the pocket with the ball. It was the easiest call that anybody could have when it comes to the illegal contact rule. And I froze. I froze. I I, I swallowed the olive. I wasn't prepared. I mean, pressure beat me. It absolutely beat me. And I didn't make the call, and the pass went incomplete. And I knew. After the play was over, I mean, I knew that I had missed it. There was nothing that I could do. Uh, and, and of course, it happened to be that Denver had the ball and I was on Denver sideline. So I just got murdered by Mike Shanahan, um, who really went after me. And I couldn't do anything about it um, because, I, I, basically, I knew I was wrong. And... Uh, and it's funny because people will say to me, and the point of the of this thing was that people will ask me, what's the best call you've ever made? And I would say to you, I would say to you, if I asked you that question, you couldn't answer that. Um, we know we make mostly good ones, but the best call, I mean, I would have no idea. What's the worst call? That will never leave me. And, and I, I think it speaks to the commitment that we all have to to uh, to try to be perfect and to yeah. and, and even if we realize we can't we still strive for that and I, i'll never forget i'll take that to my grave much like ed hockley will take to his grave his blown call that he had in a bronco a charger game in san diego where he ruled an incomplete pass on the quarterback on a pass fumble play, and it was clearly a fumble. And replay couldn't give the ball to the recovering team then. Um, and so it cost San Diego the game. And I remember having to call into the locker room after the game to talk him off a ledge because he was going to quit. And, um, and, and that's, I think, representative of how seriously we take that and how calls that are blown like mine um, will go to – me will go with me into my grave. The interesting thing, okay. as I said earlier today, you put it behind you, you attempt to put it behind you, and because you never know what's going to come next, and at the end of the game, fourth down play, uh, the Chiefs are down by four in, Chan- in Kansas City. They throw a pass from about the 20-yard line yeah. into the corner of the end zone on mm-hmm. my side. At the sideline between me, I was the side judge and the head linesman. Gonzalez goes up in the air, controls it, controls the ball, gets hit, and then lands either inbounds or out of bounds. So the decision that had to be made was, was he inbounds or out of bounds when he first touched down? And was it a force out, which was an applicable rule back then? Um, Probably the hardest call, uh, to make, I think, as I as I think back, but I had a twenty three year old, a twenty three year head linesman uh, on the field with me, and the play was bracketed between the two of us. So you feel better when you're a second year guy and you have a twenty three year a uh, year guy, you know, looking at the play. You don't feel a lot better when the twenty three year guy looks at you and shrugs his shoulders, um, which was very disheartening. And so I had to make the call of was it a catch, was it not a catch? Inbounds, out of bounds, force out. I ended up ruling incomplete pass, uh, which then meant that Kansas City lost the game. And as I was trotting off the field, I remember being just like in the state of shock and just knowing that it was, if it was wrong, I was going to have my, basically my last game on the field be a tragic mess. Um, if it was right, then it was going to get graded as a good guess. Um, so uh, as I'm trotting off the field with my shoulders down, a guy grabbed me and, it, and, he, and he, 
I turned and he said, Jerry Seaman called down and told me to tell you that you made a great call. And I literally at that point from going slumped shoulders, um, you know, uh, and being, you know, feeling incredibly nervous, man, my, my chest jutted out and just thought I was the king of all time. Um, but it was, it was an interesting last game. That was my last game on the field, period. I guess unless you talk about 15 years later when I signed up to officiate freshman football back here in Sacramento when I moved back home in 2010 and uh, worked a, a freshman high school game um, and, and then got convinced to do a varsity game the next night and I pulled a hamstring. And my career was over. My comeback career was over. <laughs> but I do think there's lessons. I mean, and there there is lessons in that. And and I think the lesson, you know, to me is is the fact that you know you have to put things aside. You have to put them behind you. And we hear it. We know it. I mean, I'm a golfer. I, I'm a golfer. I know. And I get pissed off on the golf course. But I know if I make a double bogey and I take it to the next tee and I'm still pissed off, I'm going to swing too hard and I'm going to make a double bogey. Um, we have to look at golf as 18 separate events. We have to look at football at every play as a separate event. And we have to put the play, the, the, the play before, the hole before behind us and learn how to do that so we're not um, – affected by it so that was kind of one of the things we talked about earlier today and brad wanted me to mention about battlefields to ball fields look at here's the issue is um this is just a foundation that we started here that pays for veterans and actives and pays for their uniforms and their um, registration fees and we pay for the naso membership if it's football to get it right training program we take care of all their costs for three years i didn't serve um, I feel like I owe it to those that did, you know, that provided for me basically and for my ability to officiate. So we have this this tool to try to help um, recruiting. But I, I, I will say this, that, you know, we are in interesting times right now. And we are all around the country and have been for the last uh, number of years we have seen you know, the numbers declining and officiating basically hurts in football even more because we have working seven man mechanics, but literally hurts in most all the sports. And, uh, you know, when you look at the average age of a of a amateur official right now, it's risen to 80 to uh, 54 years old. When you look at back in the, in the 70s, the average age, if this is amazing to me, the average age of people signing up to officiate was 18, and now it's 42. Um, the trends are not good. The trends are not good. And so it's, you know, as, as you, you guys involved now, you guys and girls involved now, you have to look not just beyond what is the penalty for an ineligible man downfield. You have to. We have to. All of us that are involved in officiating have to do something to help reverse these trends. It's a bigger obligation. And, you know, and I, I would like you sometime just to sit in your session. And, and unfortunately, I have to go early today. But uh, I'd like you to sit in your session, section and, and try to say, let's look at the big picture here. And what, what, can we do to make things better? I mean, let's face it, in 2000, I'll take it in Sacramento alone, 2008, we had 1,500, a little over 1,500 officials in the NCOA covering six sports, seven counting softball and baseball as separate. Um, we had 1,562 officials. Going into this year, overall, we had 1,022. We've had a third drop, a third drop in the number of people that uh, that are that are ready to officiate. So you look back and say, well, what happened between 2008 and where we are now at 2020? You well, if you go back to 2008 and nine, what were we doing? Coming out of a recession, the economy was not good. Okay, people 
needed to earn some extra money. And it's not that it should be the number one reason why you officiate is to earn money, even though that was my reason, by the way. Back in 1971, 30 bucks, I got $10 a game. Pop Warner football, three games on a Sunday, 30 bucks cash. My skinny body could remain drunk for four weekends for that. And uh, so I started, I started doing it for money. But I think the pool is bigger. I think the pool is going to be bigger. And I think we need to think about how do we go after that? How do we go after the younger group? And, to make and what what do we have to do different? I mean, if you guys in, in you know at your level now and you've been through it when you're talking about rules means you've been through this for a while, you guys need to figure out as a leadership group going forward, what can we do to change things? And part of this, I think we're feeling right now, right now. I mean, I think when you look back at after what we've gone through with COVID-19, amongst all the video, I mean, all the uh, deaths and the, you know, the suffrage that's going through economically and, of course, with people dying, what can we learn through this? Through something maybe not significantly important compared to that, but officiating. Um, I say we learn how to do things differently. We learn how to train we started differently. We learn how to, um, and I, I don't want to be mean necessarily, but we, we figure out a way to break down the old guy's network, to run associations differently than they've been run by in the past. You know, young people, and then I, I use it here. I can't use it for Albuquerque because I, I don't, know the geographics perfectly there but uh if i'm here in sacramento and i have auburn is in the ncoa the northern california business association but it's a 40 mile drive away to jesuit high school we said we i i have a hard time convincing a young person to get in this car and drive 45 minutes each way an hour and a half to go sit in the classroom to see somebody talk in front of the classroom about what is pass interference or what the rule is. And man, my point is, I think we need to use video. We need to figure out virtual training programs. We need to use the anim animated programs that are available to us so we can tailor, keep a young, young people's interest. And we can get more attendance at meetings because of the fact that you can attend it at home. Yeah. I mean, younger people are hell a lot better than me in figuring out how to mm -hmm. make something work. But again, I think it's breaking down mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. barriers, the mores, the things that we've done the way we've done it in the past. Sacramento is doing things the way they did them 25 years ago, maybe 40 years mm -hmm. ago. And it doesn't, it just, it's not working. So I think it would be my challenge to you guys. And I'm sorry. I am so sorry that I have to run. Um, uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing. I love Dana and everybody. And so, you know, tickle for Brad to put this thing together. But it's just that there was a conflict that I have coming up on another one of these calls on Zoom that I do know how to operate. But I challenge you. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to challenge you in two different ways, and I'll expand on different ways, um, the two different ways. I challenge you to figure out how to change the system so that it makes it workable for the group of people that we need, and we already talked about. It. And then I challenge you individually to not think about, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, to not think about what you do well, but to think about what you don't do well. To think about the areas of officiating that you struggled with and to isolate them, list them, and work on them. And, and I, 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 the, the, the best advice I can give to really all officials is the things that you do well end up coming natural. And it's easy 
to focus on those things you do well. It's hard to focus on what you don't do well. So think back, think back, not just last year, but think back, you know, the years before. What part of the game do you struggle with? And if it's rules, focus on the rules. If it's pass interference, watch video, 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 video. Um, pick it, and that includes communication. If you're not doing a good job communicating with the coaches, you know, focus on that. But focus on the one or two things that you feel like you have done poorly and, and put the, the, the most of your, um, your focus on that. So I'm going to leave you. I hate to leave you, and I hate to do it so short because Brad knows I can talk forever. Um, but, um, but I just have to go run on this other call. So good luck to you all. Uh, Brad, thank you, and um, I'll be happy to join again on another date when I don't have this conference. Well, we've gotten comments, and you can probably see them, Mike, that uh, you're an awesome speaker, and we can't wait to have you back. Uh, I'm sure we'll work with Dana to get you back, and we can do some more officiating stuff, on-field stuff. So thank you so much for your time, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Okay, take care, guys. Wow. Uh, He's on up. Incredible Thanks, human being. Wow. Dana, do you uh do you want to talk a little bit? Sure. Um so my hope is that we could get Mike on for an hour and really have him do some deep dive stuff. Um, you know, in addition to the fact that he obviously knows officiating, he, you know, because of his involvement with the television side of things, he's definitely an entertainer. I can I mean, honestly, I can listen to Mike talk for three hours straight and it doesn't even begin to bother me. Um, if you can, what I would ask the group of individuals who are on right now is if you can think of some topics you might want him to cover. He's got such a broad knowledge about officiating, about you know, coach relationships, any of that kind of stuff. And obviously he he's worked at the NFL and he's you know, he's used to things with with a whole bunch of TV and a whole bunch of millions of dollars um, involved in that big business. But at the end of the day, it's all still officiating. Um, if you guys can just think of some topics and I'll get with him in the meantime and figure out a, a time and date that we can get him back on to discuss those things. Um, one of the things that I was texting with Dennis and Ken about is we're going to have, as you guys probably saw in the emails I've sent out, we'll have a couple of sessions with coaches and officials. We're going to start getting some, you know, football coaches into the fold as well, and maybe having him be a part of one of those. Um, those will be on May 7th and May 21st, so I may have him join us for one of those, but I would also like him to join just the football officials. So Think about some topics that you all might want him to discuss. I know he'd love to talk to us a little bit more about battlefields. Um, you all probably remember we were the first state association to really get involved with B2B as a, as a state. So that was exciting and awesome. Um, but Mike's just, he's a super human being and I'm, I'm excited that he was on tonight. And uh, that was just a taste of what I know he has to offer. So. I'll work and get him back on with us. And if you have ideas, just send me an email or a text with those, and I can definitely pass that on to him as we set him up for an, an, another stop. Outstanding. Thank you, Dana. Uh, you guys, we're going to cut it short tonight. Um, we appreciate Brad, you bringing in our guest, and we'll see you guys tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay, in the morning. Morning. If you guys want more information on Battlefields to Ballfields, it's really just how it says up, up there, battlefields to ballfields .com. Um, It's a great organization, and uh, if you know any veterans that might be interested in officiating, it's a great way to get them into the, involved into the program. Thanks, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, oh, everybody. Todd. Sorry it was so short. Todd Morris, do you, I need to talk to you and see if you've got some connections down at um, Cannon. We'll talk. Absolutely. I think we've, we could definitely do that with, with our, uh, our airmen here in Clovis. That'd be great. Um, let's talk soon and see if you can't get me a connection down there or if you can start a conversation um, down in that area. That would be amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, All right, y'all. Everybody. Stay we'll well. See you, see you in the morning.
Bye bye. Bye guys. Take care, guys. Talk to you Monday. Th thanks for talking, Mike. You bet. Bye bye.